Good evening, friends. God bless you. Let us continue our study uh, in Battle of Minds. Yesterday, we uh, learned about when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, what happens or what we gain um, at the time we are born again Christians uh, in, in relationship to God the Father. Today, we are going to study what when we became Christian, what happens or what we will receive in relationship to God the Son. Uh, we will start reading, um, uh, starting with Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, we are, the first thing is, we are accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1, 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the beloved. We are accepted in the believer Jesus Christ. Now this is very significant. Do you remember when Jesus was baptized and he came out of water? What happens? The sky opened and the Holy Spirit came down and they heard a voice calling out from heaven that this is my beloved son in whom I am pleased. Now this is the time when Jesus was baptized. He has not done any miracle. He has not healed any people. He has not raised any dead. He has done nothing. But God says that this is my, my son in whom I am pleased. So when we became Christian, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God says that you are my beloved in whom I am pleased. You don't have to worry about doing good works. The good works are the fruit of being a child of God. It is not the root to become a child of God. Again, the good works are not the root or the reasons that we become a child of God. But when we become a child of God, then the good works are the fruit once we become a child of God. As God said to Jesus, you are my beloved son. He has not done nothing. So when we become Christian, we don't have to worry about doing good things. And then God would say that you are my beloved. No, we become beloved first. The second thing I wanted to read is a couple of verses. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. It says, for by the one spirit, we all are baptized into one body. Now, the Greek word here used is called soma, that is a physical body. For by one spirit, we all are baptized into one body. And you know how many Christian uh, institutes are divided on this one subject of baptism. But scripture says that we are baptized into one body. Whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free or have been all made to drink into one spirit. Romans 6, 4. Therefore, we are buried with him, with Jesus Christ, by baptism into death. Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Life. Galatians 3.27 for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That means you are putting on just like a new, a new cloth, a new shirt or new garment. You are, when you are baptized, you are putting on Christ. Do you remember that the baptism does not save a person and assures the eternal life. But baptism is the outward expression of inward change. When you have inward change, when you accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior, that is your inward change. And baptism is the outward expression that you are changed. Here, what the verses we read, it says we are baptized in Christ's body. Soma, the Greek word is Christ's body. Romans 6.4 you know, says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism 
into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now I wanted to give you some illustration. This is really important for you and me to understand. I'm trying my best. This may not be uh, the best uh, illustration, but I hope that God will open your eye to see the message behind it. Say this white ball is a Jesus Christ who had done no sin. He had committed no sin. Pilate says, I have found no sin in him. There was no sin in him. And this little red ball represents us. We have broken all the laws. We have done so, so many wrong in our life. So according to this scripture we just read, when we are baptized into the body of Christ and we die in, in, in Christ, what will happen because God, God's, uh, Jesus' body was torn apart. He, he paid all the penalty. His body was torn apart like this ball. And then when we are, let me read again. When we are baptized, we are baptized into the body. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. And then Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. So we are in Jesus Christ. So when Jesus died, he died taking our sin, all sin with him, he died. And when he is buried, and then Galatians 3, 20, and then uh, Romans 6, uh, 4 says that uh, Christ was raised up from the dead and Jesus was raised from the dead. By the glory of Father, even so we also should walk into newness of life. Where are we? We are in Christ. There is no us. And that is why Galatians 3.27 says, For as many as you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. This is you inside. You have, this is you inside. But you have put on Christ on you. So now, it is, you are living, no, no longer you are living. You have put on Christ. This is a baptism. You have put on Christ. So now when God the Father look at you, what he is seeing? He is seeing Jesus Christ. He is not seeing you as a sinful person. He is seeing you are in Christ. He cannot see your sins because your sins are paid off. He, Your sins are paid off. You are in Christ. So when you accept Jesus Christ, you are clean. You have new, and that is why Romans 6, 4 says, let us walk in a newness of life. Yesterday we heard that we are a new creature. We are a new creature. We have put on Christ. There is no, not anymore I. My sins are no longer there. I am covered by the holiness, righteousness of Jesus Christ. Let us read John 79. It says that I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Because Jesus Christ belongs to God. We are in him. We belong to God. And now what happens? According to John 79, Jesus Christ is praying for us. Because Jesus is in heaven. We are on, on this earth. We need help. We need a protection. We need a healing. And Jesus is praying for us. If you read Colossians 2, 10 to 12, uh, it, it's the same thing. That we are buried in Christ. Colossians 2, 10 to 12. And you are complete in him. You are complete. You are no longer broken. You are no long, longer sinful. Colossians 2, 10, 12 says, And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sin of the flesh by circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. So you are complete. 
You don't have to do any more thing to earn God's favor. You are complete in Christ. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. That means when we are born again Christians, Jesus, God the Father, sorry, God the Father, Jesus, God the Son, and Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit comes and make their residence with us. So you are not alone. You may not see it, but the triune God is sitting next to you. Whenever you will go to bed, he is watching over you. Whenever you wake up, he is there to greet you. You are never alone. John 10, 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You are in God's hand. There is no power in heaven or earth or any other place to pluck you out of God's hands. You got the protection. The moment you receive Christ, you got the God's protection. Acts 16.31 And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. It's a great promise. If you are saved and if you are worried about your children, your grandchildren, and you are worried about what will happen to them, this is a promise you will you are given that if you have believed in Jesus Christ, your household will be saved. No matter how far they will go, no matter how far they will run away, God will save them. That's a promise. Once you are saved, your household will be saved. Philippians 4, 7 And the peace of God which presents all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ Jesus. You remember when there was a storm and uh, the, the boat was rocking in the midst of storm. But Jesus was sleeping, sound sleeping. The storms did not bother him. So when you accept Jesus Christ, you will get the peace that in midst of the storms you would get courage and peace to sleep well. You, God will take away your worries. John 15, 20, uh, 15, 15 says that henceforth I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth but I have called you friends for all things that I have Heard from my father, I have made known unto you. So now you are part of God's family. And you will know, God will reveal to you. When you will read the Bible, when you hear messages, God will explain you the things that you were not able to understand. And you will have a divine knowledge. God will teach you. Luke 10, 20. Now, uh, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirit are subject unto you, but Father, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You might be living here, but there is a place in heaven. Your name is written there and nobody is able to wipe out their name in heaven. Ephesians 2, 6 And hath raised us together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You might be sitting on this earth, but in God's eyes, in spiritual realm, you are seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. You know, the heaven, we think it is a far off, but in reality, where God is present, that place becomes heaven. When God appeared to Moses in burning bush, he said that this is a holy ground. Ground has nothing in it, but God was present. So wherever the God is there, it becomes heaven. You are, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are seated with, in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. 
1 John 1, 3, that which we have been heard, declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. We have a fellowship. Just like we sit together on a dining table with our family, we have a fellowship with the, with the God himself. And 14, John 14, 2, in my father's house are many mansions. I would, uh, if if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. There is a mansion in heaven. You may not, you may be living a, a townhome or apartment or condo, but in heaven, you have a mansion, not built by hands, built by God himself. Jesus says that I am preparing a mansion for you in heaven. Friends, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we got much more than just simply entry into heaven. Yes, we will enter into heaven, but we are receiving much more. May God open your eyes to see. And if you have not accepted him as Lord and Savior, tonight you will come to him and accept him as a Lord and Savior. God bless you and thank you.